So this goes on for a while, back and forth. And I'm like, what the hell? Anyway, she finally calms down enough to ask me some questions. She says, well, maybe, maybe you wrote my phone number down wrong. So what's the phone number you got? So I give her my phone number. She says, yep, no, that's the right phone number. Text me right now. So I text her right now, nothing. Now, I don't understand. She says, I'm going to text you. I said, okay. So she texts. I, she said, did you get it? I said, nope. She said, I don't understand. Pause on the other end. She goes, do you have the country code in? <laughs> now it's my, I'm like, what? <laughs> she said, the country code in front of the phone number. Um, nope. She said, put 86 in front. I said, okay. Put 86 in front. Boom. Goes through. She gets all my text messages. She finally is like, okay, you really were trying to get a hold of me. You really are in Tokyo. That's good. What time are you coming in tomorrow? I said, well, plane leaves here at 9.30. Supposed to be there about 11.30. Okay, I'll be back at the airport. She said, you better be. I said, yeah. So the next morning, I go through the whole rigmarole again. I tell you right now, Japanese customs, I'm not a huge world traveler at that point. So I hadn't dealt with many customs, but oh my God, Japanese customs were just, it was a small nightmare for me. Now maybe it was because I'd gone 48 hours pretty much without sleep by this point. But uh, they gave me a bit of a run around asking me, well, why'd you only stay one night? I said, I didn't want to stay one night. And, and uh, anyway, so finally I get through customs after a half an hour or so. And I don't know where I'm supposed to go. So I flagged this girl down. I said, where is this boarding part? She goes, oh, you need to run. I'm like, what? She goes, yeah, it's on the other side of the airport. When you get there, get on the train. And then when you get off the train, run to the other end of the airport. I'm like, you're joking. She says, no, you need to run. Great. So I ran and I ran and I got on a train and I ran some more. And I finally get to the, to the plane going to, to Guangzhou. And uh, from that point on, it was okay. So I finally get to China and I'm thinking as I'm getting on the plane I'm like my god I spent all like three hours going through customs getting in and getting out now I'm going to communist China holy jeez what's it going to be like getting in there so anyway I land and I'm like okay well I'll just follow everybody in front of me so I start following everybody and we open up into this room and my god this room had to been two football fields long, and it was nothing but immigration. Just aisle after aisle after aisle of immigration, uh, and thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And I'm just kind of like, oh shit. And as I'm looking, I'm looking at all of the signs, and all of a sudden I catch an English sign, and I look over and right smack dab in the middle of this big warehouse there's one sign foreigners here <laughs> i'm a foreigner so i'm like yeah okay great so i beeline for that line there's only one person in the line i'm like this is sweet great so i get in there i get up to the to the wicket the woman in front of me is finished she goes through i get up front gentleman behind the the booth says passport please perfect english hand him my passport he looks at it looks at me he says can you please look in that camera i said yeah so i look in the camera he says thanks very much he looks up at me he says uh first time in china i said yes i said my first time in china i've been looking forward to it he says i hope you enjoy yourself Yell in perfect english i'm expecting a language bearer all the rest this guy speaks perfect english anyway so he's Stamps my passport and hands it to me, and he says, through those doors. From the time I picked my bags up to getting through immigration, 12 minutes. 12 minutes! I'm like, holy. So anyway, so now I missed a 
step here. The wife, the, the Na, I was going to call her the wife, she wasn't a wife at the time. Na had given me rules. She said, you're in China now. We're not boyfriend and girlfriend. We're not married. You can't hold hands. You can't kiss me. You can't uh, hug me. You can't do any of that stuff. She says, because, you know, this is culture. I said, yeah, okay. Now, like I said, I'm up 48 hours by this point. I'm, uh, I'm pretty worn out. I go through the doors, and as the doors open up, there's this literally 20-foot hallway, and there's another set of doors. And just as I walk through my set of doors, the other doors open up, and there's a bus. And there's Na getting off the bus. I'm like, holy Jesus. I see her. I drop my bags. I run over. I pick her up in a big bear hug. Halfway around the bear hug in the circle I'm doing, I realize I'm not supposed to touch you. I, I literally let go of her. And she almost fell. And I'm apologizing. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot. She still looks at me and she goes, it's okay. It's international airport. <laughs> I know. Silly me. So finally, we're on the bus. Uh, she, she says to me, she said, really, I, 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 I thought you weren't going to show up. I said, yeah, well, unfortunately, I never expected the kind of stuff that I went through. But, uh, yeah, I'm here. So that was my start of my first date in China. And had a lovely week there. Met a lot of nice people. Changed my mind about what China is. So that's going to be it for now. I just wanted to make it a short one. Um, I got some other things I want to talk about, but... We'll talk about it another time. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button. It helps me grow. I'm getting there. I've almost got 100 people now. I can find a few more of you out there that'll be stupid enough to hit that button. That'd be great. You have a good day now. Bye.